Hey guys, welcome back. I hope everybody's having a fantastic Sunday and today I wanted to bring you my final power rankings of the preseason. Now that we've had a couple months here of scrims, we've had that kickoff weekend, which it might imply a couple things here and there for a few different teams, but I think that's something that we can include in our power rankings and think things have changed maybe just a little bit since the last time we've talked. So as we look at this graphic, the way I wanna do these today is I actually wanna take a look at each match from the kickoff weekend and put both of those teams in order, at least in the general area of where I think they belong, and then we'll be able to go ahead and sort them out once we get everybody in the basic spots. So first match, of kickoff weekend, we had New York and we had Dallas. Obviously, this was the storyline in the making, right? Clayster goes to a new team. Is he going to be able to take some young guns and and do the same thing with them that he did with Shotzi and Illy and the year before that with Simp and Abizi? And that was kind of the storyline. Now, it didn't quite work out that way, obviously, because Zuma just retired. I think I don't think New York wins a map if Zuma is there, but obviously that makes a huge difference. Uh, then Hydra is not there yet. So this is the one team that's completely jumbled. You kind of have to give them a pass. And I think this subliners team follows a lot of the course that Dallas did last year. Last year at the beginning of the year, Dallas was somewhere in the middle of the pack, but Clayster was able to keep working with them, and they did have the talent, and eventually by the end of the year, they got there, and I think that this is probably pretty similar here. So I'm going to go ahead, and I'm just going to leave New York right here, kind of in the middle of our screen, and when it comes to Dallas, obviously, Dallas just took care of business in the way that they needed to take care of business. It was a quick 3-0. Everybody played great. It was what you would expect out of the defending champs. I think Dallas is still one of our best teams. They kind of came into the year in that regards. And for me, they stay there as of right now. So let's go ahead. Let's just leave Dallas up here towards the top. And let's move to our next matchup, which was Seattle versus LAG. And when it comes to this, this was a 3-2. I think it kind of went how everybody expected. I didn't think that there were too many surprises. I will say I probably expected a little bit more out of Seattle, but for me, I still think that these are two teams that are probably down towards the bottom of my power rankings. I think if, if you're looking for positives here, I think Gunless had a pretty good weekend, but that's what he's done for a long time, right? Gunless is a good player. There's just all the extracurriculars that kind of get in the way of people looking at him at his true face value. I still think for Seattle to make moves this year, Octane has to replicate what he did last year in Modern Warfare, and we haven't really been seeing that from the first couple weeks of scrims to the kickoff weekend to the last couple weeks of scrims. He just hasn't been putting up the same numbers that he did before. Not that he won't get there. Obviously, if you're starting a squad and you could pick him as your AR, you're probably going to take him. He's an extreme talent, but just not quite as dominant as we saw him last year. So I'm going to take Seattle. I'm going to put him down here in the good category. And when it comes to LAG, I thought the big surprise here was Apathy. Apathy had a fantastic weekend. Silly, didn't really play great. Vivid, played okay. I mean, they didn't play terrible, but I thought the big story here was Apathy, and the biggest story was in Control. Control, Apathy was an absolute monster. I think he had like a 1.6 KD when it came to just that game mode. Hard point, he didn't play great, but when it comes to Control, he was really good, but still... I don't see a bunch of improvement happening over the next six months. I think we can put them somewhere in this category, somewhere in here, and feel pretty confident with that. Now, if we start to see them play some of those upper echelon teams and they start to get wins, now we can think about moving them up. But as of right now, I think they played great on kickoff weekend. I'm just not quite sure that I'm ready to move them up the ranks yet.
Next matchup, one that everybody was looking for. It was the primetime matchup on Saturday night. We had Florida versus Atlanta. And I think it would be safe to say that this was an outcome that not many people expected. So first, Skies was an absolute monster. Skies is just that dude that played extremely well last year. He's carrying it over to this year. If you have Skies on your team, it seems like you are always going to have a chance because he is so talented. He plays so well. I thought Awakening played well. I just think that Florida, remember if you've been watching my videos for a couple months here, we kind of had this this bunch of teams right in the middle, like four through nine. There's just this collection of teams. I think Florida is starting to prove, and especially with that win, that they're on the verge of being one of those upper echelon teams along with Atlanta. So now again, when it comes to Atlanta, we'll put them in this best category and I'll sort them through here at the end, like where I think each of these are. But as of right now, I think Atlanta is obviously one of the most purely talented teams in our league, but it was not a good opening weekend. And I am going to dock them just a little bit here once we get these all sorted out based on that opening weekend performance. So obviously with our cities, with Celium, with Simp, with Abizi, they're going to figure it out. One of the most talented, like we talked about teams in the game, but that can take a little bit of time to start to gel and to start to iron itself out and get the team chemistry and all that stuff done. I think that they will get there. It's just possible that it's not there yet. Next matchup was one that surprised me a little bit. I did pick Paris to win that matchup and they did. When it comes to London, let's start with them. I just don't see where they're going to get their firepower from over the last year. Plus Shawnee played well at the end of the year last year. But outside of that, Dylan didn't play great last year. Alex didn't play great last year. Zero moved around from a you know a couple teams last year, and Zero played better towards the end of the year once he made it to London. But I just I think if they're gonna win, one of those SMGs has to absolutely go off, and Shawnee has to win consistent gun battles against other top ARs. I don't know. I just I don't see it when it comes to London. So. I'm going to put London down here with Seattle. It kind of stinks because London was a team that last year I didn't expect to be pulling for going into Modern Warfare, but the story with the Twins and their come up and the culture that they build at London, and now it's just all gone. The Twins are gone, and Shawnee is kind of like a good storyline, but there's nothing that really draws me to that franchise this year like they did last year, and I think that's a little bit of a shame. Um, so... London's down there. When it comes to Paris, Paris surprised me a little bit. Now, I did pick them to win this matchup. Scraps, one of the one of the twins that we just talked about from London, obviously makes his way over to Paris. We know that Scraps is a talented player. I thought Fire played really well. Nobody was really sure what to expect out of Fire and Classic and, you know, how would they play in this first matchup? And I do think, as I pick them to win this matchup, I think they're a better team than London, but how much better? Right now, I think that they're probably somewhere in this collection. If I was going to do this, I'd probably put Seattle ahead of London, and then these two teams are really close. LAG and Paris, I want to see more out of them. I want to see, you know, is one team way better at search than the other? Or are they consistently winning control matchups against some of the top squads? We have to see these teams in action a little bit more. But we've already seen quite a bit of shuffling based on our current power rankings from just a few weeks ago. Next matchup was Minnesota versus Toronto. And I really enjoyed this matchup. So battle for the north. Minnesota was able to clutch up in that search and destroy. They were up like five rounds to two in that map five. Then it was 5-3, then it was 5-4, then it was 5-5, and I just had this feeling in the back of my mind that Toronto proved last year from the beginning of the Modern Warfare season, they were a really good search and destroy team, and I could just kind of see it coming to fruition, but Minnesota did clutch up, 
That's what happens when you have a veteran-laden squad with a bunch of experience. Accuracy didn't have a great weekend or a great match, but when it came to that search and destroy, accuracy played really well. So that's where, you know, attach absolutely went off for Minnesota. And then it and accuracy wasn't playing great. And it came to that search and destroy. Accuracy stepped up. And that's the thing that accuracy can do. That's what Major Maniac can do. Attach and Priest that can just take over a map whenever they feel like it. So that's what makes them so dangerous. And when it comes to Toronto, I didn't think that Methods had a great match overall, but Bant played phenomenal, and we saw last year with Cami and Classic, they were basically like a human highlight role. I mean, they were just play after play. Towards the end of the year, they won their Toronto home series. They made waves in the playoffs. So as of right now, if I'm putting these two teams where I think they belong, I think that Toronto is ahead of all those other teams that we have down towards the bottom. And I think that that Minnesota is just a little bit behind Florida. I don't think that you can put Minnesota ahead of Florida based on the fact that Florida just earned a victory over Atlanta. But I think if Minnesota was to play Atlanta, I think it's going to be super close. I think if Minnesota is going to play Florida, I think it's a coin toss. But for right now, we'll give Florida the respect that they earned. We'll put them a little bit ahead. And we'll go to our final matchup, which was Optic Gaming versus LA Thieves. So when it comes to these two, I, was, I wasn't I was shocked, but I was a little bit surprised. I'm not quite sure I expected a 3-0. I did pick Chicago to win. I think I picked like a 3-1, a 3-2, somewhere in there. But I think that this win cements optic in this best category and again we're gonna sort out these top three teams in just a moment but when it comes to 100 thieves that was a pretty bad performance right i think a lot of people are expecting them in the five spot four spot six spot somewhere in the middle of the road and i don't really think that they showed that and i think the issue is one, the inconsistency from TJ and Kenny. You don't know what you're going to get from them on a week-to-week basis. It changes by match. It changes by day. It changes by tournament. That's a big thing for me, inconsistency. Slasher Slasher's a great player. I'm not quite sure. I, I kind of look at him a lot like Octane. Slasher and Octane last year were incredible. Tournament in, tournament out, those two. We're leading the KD charts. We're having a ton of impact on their squads. And I just quite haven't seen it this year. And then you bring along Temp. How does he fit into that whole team chemistry type ideal there? It's a little bit up in the air. So as of right now, if we're putting these teams where I think they're at, I think we have London. I think we have Seattle. I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to put Paris a little bit behind LAG. I'm going to move... New York a little bit down, and I think I'm going to sneak 100 Thieves right here in front of New York and behind Toronto. Now, this can change. I think Toronto and 100 Thieves are very close. I would love to see them go head to head and see kind of what happens there. But right now, I want to see more from Toronto. I want to see a little bit more from LA Thieves before we start to move them around. I think that the fourth best team as of right now is Florida. I think I feel pretty confident about putting Minnesota right there in that five spot, which brings us to our top squads. I think now this is only based off of recent scrims and what happened in that kickoff weekend. So we'll see a little bit more when we get to this Atlanta home series soon. But I think the defending champs deserve to have the respect on their name until somebody proves us otherwise. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to move Dallas up here. I will say on that first weekend, we have Minnesota playing LA Thieves. That's the very first matchup that kicks off the home series, the Atlanta home series. And then we have Minnesota playing Dallas. So we're going to find out about Dallas and we're going to find out about Minnesota. If Minnesota goes 0-2 here, 
Now it's time to drop them back a little bit, but those are two massive matchups from that kickoff weekend that I cannot wait for. But based on today's power rankings, I'm going to take Dallas. You have to give them the respect that they've deserved. They have done nothing to lose that respect. And we'll see once the competition starts, are they for real like they were last year, which leaves us with, with Optic and Atlanta. And I got to tell you, the performance that we saw out of Optic is giving me a little bit of an edge here for OG. I'm going to drop Atlanta back to third. Again, this can all entirely change based off of what happens in the next couple weeks and that opening home series. But I just, I was super impressed. I expected Envoy to come out and just be that repeat MVP performance, be that SMG Slayer that kind of carries them along. And that's not what happened. T2P, Scump, and Formal were absolutely terrific. I think that this is a really good game for the two of them. And Dashy. Dashy played incredibly well. Probably their best player in that matchup against LA Thieves. So there's kind of a bunch of storylines here. But I would say that T2P and Dashy, if they continue to play like that, I don't see... Now, there's a whole thing with, you know, are they going to put in the time? Are they going to play as much as they did before? Are they going to continue to keep up their practice habits? And we can talk about all those intangibles. But right now, they play tremendous. I want to see more out of them if they can continue to play that way. And then when it comes to Atlanta, now, for the Atlanta fans that are out there, we could take Atlanta in two weeks and put them right here as number one. This is literally just for... What I've seen out of a scrim or two over the last few weeks and that kickoff matchup. Now, it is what it is. It's obviously, I would say that Atlanta's probably not going to stay at three or four throughout the entirety of the year. They are on paper the most talented squad in the Call of Duty League without question. But there are many intangibles that go into that especially in 4v4. So for right now, we're going to keep Atlanta right here at three. Now, as we move into this first weekend, what's going to be the storyline there, right? Are they going to take care of business? For example, their two matchups for that first opening weekend is Atlanta versus LAG. They should obviously win that matchup but their second matchup in prime time on Sunday, Atlanta versus Chicago. We're going to find out, are these teams going to be shuffled a little bit or what's the deal? Because if Atlanta comes out and smokes LAG and they come out and they smoke Chicago and we'll say Dallas has a decent performance against Minnesota and a decent performance against Seattle, then that could very easily make this happen right here right? We put Atlanta at one, we move Dallas down to two, we put Optic at three, or maybe Optic doesn't really look great at all that opening weekend. I mean, there's a ton of things that are on the table there, but for now, this is how we're going to keep it. So this is one of those videos down in the comments below. Let me know what you're thinking. Do you agree with this order? Would you switch it around a little bit? Would you change some things? Do you think that Atlanta deserves to be back further and Florida deserves to be up? The storylines here are all over the place, so let me know in the comments. Thank you guys so much for watching another video. If you're new around here, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Leave a like as it really helps out the channel. And with that, thank you guys so much. We'll see you in tomorrow's upload.